Hi everyone, it's Dr. Ben Talley. We're here in Beverly Hills. Welcome to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to watch more educational videos, comments, questions, whatever you like. This video is for Revaness. We're doing something like a liquid facelift. We're using filler to really make small enhancements around the face without using a lot of volume. You don't want bulky faces, you want them delicate. I love using Revaness. I love a lot of different products in their line, so you'll see how we use it here. Allison's our victim of the day. She's never had anything. Have you had anything done? No, and she knows me very well and yet has had nothing done. So today we gotta go ham. We gotta go do whatever we want on this face. And we're using our lovely Revaness products, which I love. We have several different types, but on this face, we only really need one, maybe two. Just do a quick analysis and then we'll get to actually doing stuff. So Allison's face is lovely and looks like a baby. So it doesn't need to do anything for youth. We're gonna work more on kind of accent and making things come out more and balance more. Not really to make her look younger or less tired. She looks fine. If you look at the face, it's very triangular she comes out from a narrow chin that's slightly recessed a little bit of a weak jaw but then comes to a more prominent kind of temples and frontal part of her head with that you don't want to do much making her like pop out this way or pop out that way then everything ends up looking big so we want to play within our boundaries and keep her exactly as she is and do low volume changes and the low volume changes are better anyway so we'll do the lips to bring the lips out a little bit lips you always do last because they hurt a little bit more so what I'll do is I'll start with the jawline come around to the chin we'll do those two nasolabial folds maybe a dot on the cheek probably not much because you can't really bring her cheek out without bringing her upper eyelids out this way three-dimensionally she'd end up looking wider and flat so it wouldn't look good and her under eyes are a little sensitive so I'm not sure I want to inject them let's just play first with the chin and the jawline for this we're gonna use Revaness Versa this is their classic filler which is fantastic it is one of the newer type of cross-linking which is a little bit more linear and how it injects it's very smooth and it can be used in soft tissue under the dermis or it can be used going up onto the bone as well. Very easy to inject. It comes with a 27 gauge needle, which is kind of on the big side, but that's fine for a smooth filler that we're gonna place on the jawline. So not a big deal. We'll just use that. You can always switch it out. When you do this, always prime your own needle. Don't let anyone else prime it for you. You have to feel the pressure that it takes to push it out every single time. You have to relearn it. So don't let someone prep it for you. All right, so put your head back. Gentle torture. So when we go in the midline, we're doing bony accents. So we're gonna come down onto the bone itself, onto the periosteum. You have to have your thumb always under underneath on the chin. There's a very high chance and it's very common that the chin filler will escape into the neck and then start making you have a pooch under here. That's very, very common. We're doing small aliquots. People want to build this out like a chin implant, but it's not a good idea. So I'm doing less than 0.1 cc aliquots as I march along through the same hole on the lower border of the chin, which is where you want to be. You have a slight tilt pointing upwards because you do not want it to escape into the neck. With that tiny bit, I put like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 cc's, she's already corrected. You don't need to put much, you just got to put it in the right place. People don't get that. They just put a ton of filler to correct things. You don't need much. She has a tiny face does not need a lot so centrally I'm gonna put a tiny bit more centrally I like to go on the periosteum because we're building bony accent not soft tissue accent you don't want to keep adding filler to the chin anteriorly like people do because it'll make your chin doughy and disgusting and we don't want that we want it very refined and firm looking the chin's supposed to be firm so you can see she already has full correction on the front of the chin and what we're balancing it to is her forehead when you look at her from the side and her teeth their teeth are slightly prominent, they push forward. We're making the chin match it now so this doesn't look like it's so prominent. And now if you look at her chin and her forehead, it looks like a nice even saucer. So that's where she's supposed to be. If you put too much soft tissue when she smiles, it would end up coming down. And even if today it looks good, if you put one cc in there, just in the front, three, four months later, it's gonna start getting doughy and nasty. Looks like shit. Now we're gonna go to the pre jowl sulcus. pre jowl sulcus, you can see these are the jowls. If you follow the nasal labial fold down, it hits the jowl here. pre jowl sulcus is this area here. This is pre jowl fold. It goes into the neck, that's your submandibular glands so all of this droops as you age like this like a pendulum if you do a facelift it takes you back up like that jowl is gone so jowl is not fat that you liposuction or kybella it's ptosis it's a little bit of drooping that just came down like this onto the face we're not operating on it we're going to camouflage it when we camouflage it you have to inject this three-dimensionally meaning you have to inject it to come outwards and downwards we're dropping this to match the level of the jawline and the chin. So we come in, I like to do this in a subdermal plane. There's a small chance of bruising here, so if you use a cannula, you're probably a little better off. 
but we want to take that chance because it's Allison. So there we go. We do a tiny little bit there, massage it in, smooth it out. It's almost all the way corrected already. When you do the chin, you want to have the patient a little bit lower sometimes. That way you can peek up, peek down. I don't like doing periosteal injections over here on the side because you can hit the vessels that come out and you can cause a pretty bad vascular compromise in this region from the mental foramen, the vessels that come out. And you have some from the neck and the facial artery that come up. So this is a pretty risky area if you're going to go deep. If you stay superficial, nothing happens. And this side doesn't really need much. Remember, we are not symmetric animals. No animal is a symmetric animal, really. Okay, so that's that. That looks fantastic. She needs a little bit of neurotoxin over here, which I'll put later. That's again, because she has prominent teeth and for her to close her mouth, she really has to stress. So these areas end up getting indented. Because of that, I'm gonna put a tiny bit right here where the depressor anguli oris indentation happens. And you can inject antegrade or retrograde does not matter. I just did antigrade. Again, same thing. We want to get that same angle and teeny tiny bit in the subdermis and you're safe. Fantastic. That's one syringe we use to correct this entire area. Now we go to the jawline. So jawline is kind of interesting because most of it corrects already once you do the pregial sulcus in the chin. So you always do pregial sulcus and chin first, then you move back to the jawline. Looking at the jawline, there's two ways to do it. One is you go down onto the bone and you pop it outwards. That's giving you lateral projection. The other is you want to build a new appearance of a mandible by going subdermally this way and that way. Too much of that makes you look like you have a parotid gland tumor like a cancer so you don't want to do too much on Allison here we're just gonna do a little tiny bit I'm gonna go down onto the bone feels weird when I do that aspirate not much you can hurt there march it in a couple spots and then as you come out that's it so I just put a little tiny bit over there now I'm gonna come draw it superficially so right under the dermis and you don't want to put too much here it'll look like a tumor in the future if you put too much we're gonna go upwards to draw the ramus of the mandible is the idea and that's it so once you touch the bone the needle's dull you got to change the needle before you stab your patient again we're gonna do the same thing so i'm gonna push on the angle right here of her mandible the gonial angle put my finger on it come right on top of the bone do not want to go posteriorly accidentally and inject big vessel big vein there so that gave her the strength she needs there on this side she doesn't need much else i'm going to build her up right here in the preparotid fascia to help make the top of the mandible look a little tiny bit stronger having a good time yeah. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am. You know that song? So it goes second versa, same as the first. Uh. You ever heard that? <laughs> I'm Henry the Eighth. I am. I am. You don't know second verse, same as the first. Never heard of this? Oh man, you guys are too young. Okay. Two ways to fill nasolabial folds. One is the actual fold to pop it out. The other one is the crease that forms. Allison has stronger creases than folds, so we're gonna worry more about that. We don't wanna add volume again because she has prominent teeth. People with prominent teeth and prominent maxilla don't have strong nasolabial folds. They're already pushed out and supported, but they do get creases because they're straining around their mouth so much. This person is a strainer. So we gotta go in superficially, get intradermal or directly subdermal. So I tent it out, go upwards, and this is gonna be a retrograde injection. Retrograde injections are better for this area because you're letting your needle guide where the filler goes versus pressure guiding where the filler goes. You do have to go back and smooth it out because you're going so superficially. If there's a little white dot like this, you can leave it, it's fine, it's gone. But let's say you wanted to get rid of it. You don't put a dissolver there. You touch it with your needle, you squeeze out that little superficial filler, and it's gone. We have to be more mechanical. You don't want to have to use dissolver, which can damage you. Go, superficial again, retrograde, retrograde, and we're done. Going to come back, make her look like a happy person. We're pushing up the depression on the corner of the mouth, going up to the chelion. Don't want to go too strong because she has a strong modiolus. Open your mouth. The modiolus is the group of muscles that comes into the corner of the mouth. She has a strong one here and here, and if you feel too much, around there it's gonna the filler is gonna go into the muscle and make it bulge more and she'll look masculine so you have to go very gentle smile big and relax so you can see it follows in this crease smile big hold it for a sec so i'm gonna start in the crease while she's smiling because i can get to the base of that line okay open your mouth there you go there perfect and now i'm going to continue up the rest of it so that's a little trick you can use for people who have lines around the marionettes where it follows all the way into the sulcus here and it really makes a bigger difference if you're able to follow it appropriately. There's another line here that forms on people that comes down into the pre fold. I actually inject those with the patient smiling. And this is all retrograde. And this is a very safe plane to be in, directly subdermal or intradermal. 
You do not want to get into the muscle plane accidentally. And then here, you never let your needle hit the alar crease. If you want to do here, you want to inject as you go in and stop. If you hit into the alar crease, there's the inferior alar artery that tucks right under there and it comes from here, wraps around. You're going to inject it and it's actually people inject it fairly commonly and never know. It doesn't always cause like a visible problem, but I've done so many lip lifts. I've seen it cannulated and you see these little sausages of filler in the artery that have been there for years and they never had any vascular compromise. So let's make you happy on the side. Close your mouth. Yeah. So we got to do some neurotoxin to to relax the strain, which we'll do. Again, she has a strong modiolus, so you don't want to do too much. Next part, we're gonna inject a couple of the acne scars. It helps them a little bit when you plump them up right underneath. Acne scars are atrophic scars, so they had little cysts and they eroded pretty much, and then they lose their dermis. This just helps give a little bit of hydration back to them. And you can see how it pours out because it's little tiny holes in the skin. There's no real tissue playing there. But you'll see some of the deeper acne scars can improve like this. It's actually one of the remaining FDA indications for all the crazy fillers is acne scars because it's already damaged skin. So they're okay injecting things in there. That was like the last known indication for silicone and delafil, artifil, those kind of things. Acne scars and nasal labial faults. Not as many on this side. Great. Yep. Can't do much else. Now you really look like you've been attacked. Hold that there. Now we're going to do lips. So we have Revenes lips. Revenes lips, very, very, very similar as regular Revenes Versa. Nice thing about these products is that they're smooth. They go into the lips nicely, easily. The key with the lips is not overdoing it. Always prime your own syringe so you can feel the pressure that it takes to push out. If you look at the lip, there's different areas. This is the philtrum. The philtrum, you don't really want to get any filler into unless someone has smass deflation. If they have smass deflation, you'll see this area here here looks a little indented and dark and in that case that either came from age or it came from dissolver and you can go in and put your needle in put it into the smass layer which is that loose layer right under the dermis and put the tiniest tiniest scotch little aliquot you barely touch it it starts to rehydrate on itself and then your body remembers to start replenishing it somehow next part is your vermilion border your dry vermilion body and then your wet dry border which is down over here at your mucocutaneous junction you generally want to only fill the dry vermilion body. There are some people who are deflated from dissolver who you have to go fill the vermilion border, but you don't want to do that in most people because the second you fill the vermilion border, you put filler into the filtrum. The lamina propria, which is the level under the mucosa in the submucosa that you're injecting here is directly connected to the SMAS, which is the layer under the dermis here. Same exact layer. There's no border, even though we're seeing a color difference with our eyes out here. So the second you inject here, it goes up there. Now you've got spread. If you're using one of these products, it'll probably stay there. If you using like one of the classic ones like Juvederm or something, it ends up migrating about 10 millimeters or so. If you use silicone, it'll go about two centimeters. We're looking at her lip. Her lip has very nice height in the middle. If you look at the vermilion body height here in the paramedian area, she gets a little bit of what we call an M-shaped lip. So she's missing volume here. And then she has decent exposure on the side. So on her, what I want to do is add a little bit of volume here. So this pushes down, add a little bit more here. So again, this pushes forward and down. So if you look at her from two vectors, outwards and downwards, words and not do much in the middle. What you have to understand about the lip is that there is two parts of the lip in general. There's the subnasal lip, which is the lip under the nose and the subfacial lip, which is the lip under the face. They're separated by this diagonal line. There's a diagonal line that goes from inside the sill, following the last contention line down to this point. So everything medial to this point is a subnasal lip. Everything lateral to this point is a subfacial lip. The difference is with injectables, when you inject from here, medial and the subnasal lip where the vermilion border is strong, you're gonna get eversion. You can actually get it to lift upwards. Anything lateral here where you can see the vermilion border or the white roll starts to disappear here, lateral to the diagonal line, you cannot lift this no matter what. So you can keep trying and put filler here above it anywhere you want. You're only going to make it heavier over time. So don't believe people who say you can lift it by injecting over there. So we're not lifting it. We're dropping it to get more exposure. So here I put my hand there, give some pressure outwards, give some counter tension this way. And I want to go in, hopefully not bruising. I go directly into the submucosa. If you go deeper than that, there are vessels. If you want to be super precise, you can put your needle forward and do a retrograde. I just do a little bit of antegrade push my way in little by little forward and you have to watch what direction the filler is migrating to. The filler does not 
always go straight forward. It goes wherever the hell it wants to go. So you have to watch it with your eye. It was easier to do this with the older fillers, with the beaded fillers like Classic Juvederm and Restylane, but it's not that hard to do with these linear fillers. So I do that, march myself forward again, push it out, pull towards yourself, get right into the mid vermilion body. And what we're trying to do is provide a little volume and hydration to this lip. Hyaluronic acid pulls water weight into the lip even if it's prehydrated. So it'll make her lip look more volumized. You don't want to massage much, just a little. If you massage too much, it can migrate. Here, I'm gonna go downwards a little bit to get into this crease. Small amount of volume into that crease and that's it. You don't want to take too long injecting because it's gonna get swollen on this side and then you can't match up the side so well. So I just put a little bit to give her a touch of reversion along that top border. Close your mouth. So she does not need much more than that. I'm gonna put a little bit into what we call the Kilion. She has a little fissure over there. Fissure's gone. Same thing on this side. Stretch it, push it towards yourself, get everything exposed, come in laterally. We wanna just inject a little tiny bit as we get in there, making sure it's not migrating anywhere or spreading anywhere we don't want it to be. She has beautiful tissue planes because they haven't been traumatized before. People who have been filled or dissolved multiple times, it's all damaged and when you inject, it's much less predictable where it's gonna go. So hers is behaving. It's doing what I want it to do. Again, I'm gonna do a little vertical injection over here into that crease. You don't want to get rid of the sulci laborum. Doesn't make sense. It's natural. It's like having a fingerprint, those little wrinkles on there. But it's good to soften a couple if they're dry or indented. So again, here we go. And we're going to give her just a little bit at the Cupid's bow peak. And that's it. So that matches her. Little face. You don't want big, giant, stupid lips. Lower lip, if you look, close your mouth. Doesn't need anything. She's matchy-matchy now. You can have the lips be about 50-50, or you can have the lower lip be bigger than the upper lip. You just don't want the opposite. On her face, you don't need to put much. I'll tell you what you can do though on her is add a little hydration right above this border here. You can just go from one side and do a tiny bit, and that goes to both sides, and that's it. It looks healthier now. You do not want to go lateral on most people. It'll just make their mouth look like a sausage. It gets longer. It is not good looking. And if you do that with a product that migrates, it's going to go inside, outside, and look thick and disgusting. Stay central. These are your two tubercles. You have two little pillows. You can enhance them if you want by injecting directly into them just a little bit, not too much. So either the border or those two tubercles. But for her, this is enough. All of that is done. You now just have the little tiniest bruise on that lip, but otherwise, finito. She goes straight for the lips. See, it's just healthier. I like it. For the chin and the jawline. Uh, yeah, and I, I didn't go make a different chin. I kept your chin. I just enhanced it a little tiny bit. People go way too far with that stuff. Wow. So this is a basal labial fold. See, we have to put. Oh my god! I put 0.1 yeah, cc's in there. There's not much that. volume in there. Oh my it's a tiny, tiny bit. And then from the front, oh my God. creases just aren't as deep. Yeah. Right, there were no folds to really fill. Yeah. And then if you see the mouth, lower lip has those that little sulcus right there. Now it's hydrated. Upper lip was buried with the skin hooding over on both sides. Now it's folded up. Do you enjoy your face now? I'm enjoying my face now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go for a night on the town. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs>